So when I'm looking at devices and reviewing them for you guys, I never just look at the raw spec sheet, right? Because despite what the spec sheet might say, there are just some things that you might need or want out of your device that I flat out just can't do, right? Last week in my Galaxy S24 Ultra review video, I broke down not just what the numbers and the specs say, but specifically how the S24 Ultra has different solutions in different areas for me personally on a day-to-day -day basis. The iPhone 15 Pro Max that might be stronger on paper and benchmark simply does not have solutions on a day-to-day -day basis. There were some people that were upset about that, but as a whole, I can actually say that I'm really proud of the community as a whole, that we're able to have differing opinions and not be toxic about it. Let me know if you're part of the hashtag Galaxy fam or if you're a team Apple as well, just like taking a peek, wondering what's over on this side, that's okay too. Even when I had the SIM card in my iPhone 15 Pro Max, the S24 Ultra, the Galaxy Fold 5 is a device that I've always carried with me for a myriad of different things, including this, right? Most YouTubers have that additional monitor on top of their camera so they can see better. I didn't want to shell out the money personally because the Galaxy Fold 5 complements my lifestyle in doing this YouTube thing because as a big enough display where I can see clearly myself on the screen in case I need to fix anything if I have like a little boogie or like crust around my mouth or something and I can adjust all of the toggles and that is the kind of stuff that I love to see in technology right the ways that they live and breathe with us outside of just the spec sheet and although I've been loving the Galaxy Fold 5 over these last several months which you guys are going to see there are definitely things that you should know about if you're thinking about picking it up if you are new here my name is Dave and I do tech now looking at battery life when I first picked up the Fold 5 um, I had a day in the life video that I did with my now fiance Maria and I walked you guys through a myriad of different things between like the cameras um, multitasking day-to-day -day usage and the battery life but honestly little to no issues I was able to get to most of my days end um, around like 9 p.m. with like 10-ish percent battery life if I'm remembering correctly. Since that time, however, I can say that the battery life has definitely taken a little bit of a hit. Where I feel like usually now the phone is kind of tapping out at around 6 p.m. Um, there are times when I'm using the phone, especially if I'm using it heavily, that I absolutely have to charge at least once per day. I personally have a charger available to me and pretty much every time of the day I have a charger in my car, I have a charger here in my room, I'm a portable power bank that I usually don't have to use for the Fold 5, but if I did, I have it. So battery anxiety for me is not a big deal. But if you're someone that knows you usually are not going to be next to a charger at most points of the day and you're wondering about that, the battery life definitely at this point leaves a bit to be desired. I know one of the points of concern is actually the way that this phone handles different social media applications. As you can see, X works very, very smoothly here. I can swap over go to Facebook. That works really well. I really appreciate this sidebar implementation where I can hop between different tabs. That works really well. And it works just as well over here on Instagram too. Personally, I haven't had any issues in terms of actual optimization, things loading or looking weird on here. And as a whole, nowadays, I feel like most applications load really well and look really good on this display. Everything is fast, smooth, and buttery. Now, when it comes to the front display, I can definitely say that after using the Pixel Fold and the OnePlus Open, found myself undoubtedly wishing that the front display was a little bit wider. I will say that for those of you with like smaller hands, everything here on the screen is very easily accessible with one hand. And then that coupled with all of the software customization that you can do for one-handed accessibility, this thing's a one-handed treat. When it comes to the tablet form factor, man, it makes responding to you guys in the comment section through YouTube Studio exceptionally easy. Um, there are times when I would text back on my iPhone 15 Pro Max, the Pixel, the S24 Ultra, but it's really hard to beat having this larger display, the keyboard split in two sides, and being able to use both thumbs like this very freely. I would say like 98% of the time that I'm responding to you guys in the comments section, it's with the tablet form factor of the Fold 5, and then like the other 2% are on my MacBook. Uh, because I happen to be on my MacBook, a notification pops up, and so I'll respond that way, but a large majority of the time, it's coming from here. I guess a bit quickly for those of you that are looking at the Fold 5 specifically for like multimedia purposes, right? Looking at like watching TV shows, YouTube and gaming. I mean, the device is like flat out, just exceptional. All of those things still, the screen is 
a masterpiece. Something I will say is that if you're on the edge between like say the OnePlus Open and the Galaxy Fold 5 and looking at multitasking, I have a video that I did that'll be right up here for you guys also. And I would say that I actually prefer the multitasking solution a bit more on the OnePlus Open. That is completely subjective, but there are some nice offerings over there as well. But all of that multimedia, multitasking, gaming and stuff like that, the chip handles everything perfectly just as well. In my experience, it's like the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the 24 Ultra. Now, AI is a very big point of contention and the Fold 5 just got an update alongside the 23 series as well, the 23 Ultra, 23 Plus and the Base 23. And I can say that the Galaxy AI on the Fold 5 works just as well as on my 24 Ultra. You could argue that it's not a smart business strategy taking one of like the premier features and marquee features of the 24 series and putting it on last year's devices, I would argue that is super pro-consumer. I'm a big fan that Samsung did this and it works just as well. The circle to search, um, being able to be the voice transcribing for notes, the AI translation when you're on phone calls with other people, especially in my work as a clinical therapist, the AI is really helpful, especially with the voice dictation, being able to break down verbal note that I personally have of clientele that I have just met with and being able to have the phone break down contextually intelligent information about like different branches in conversation that I had with my clientele um, and different like key points and things like that. For me, that is the stuff that make phones true life companions, right? Being able to bridge the gap between not only like your fun and your pleasure part of life, but also your work part of life. And that's something that the S24 Ultra does exceptionally well. And the Galaxy Fold already did well, especially with the S Pen, being able to use it like a notebook, like one of the subscribers that I met here on the channel, Dr. Ronaldo, he was really, really cool. He uses his Fold as a notebook as well. He showed me like a different template that he was using. And those are the things that I think really make the Fold 5 special. And to this day, that has not changed. And it really has, for me, bridged the gap between my personal life endeavors for like my day job, but also I consider this YouTube thing work for myself as well. I, I treat this with as much diligence. And you know, when I did the day in the life with Maria, there was a specific shot that I was recording her using the phone and I knew that is the shot. Took a screenshot on my camera, poured it over to the Fold 5, and I edited that thumbnail on the Fold 5 in its entirety. That kind of stuff is just awesome. I remember when I first got my hands on the Galaxy Fold 5, I recall thinking that the point and shoot options, right, like the 50 megapixel camera, the portrait mode, the 4K 60 video and 8K 30 video, all look really good on this thing. Um, and I even did side-by-sides comparing it to the Fold 4, right? And side-by-sides, you can see that the Fold 5 was doing better processing in the background, not only to get better clarity out of pictures and similar scenarios with the zoom as well, but also in darker lighting situations. I can see that's mostly the same here, although I do still wish that you had the telephoto cameras on the Fold 5, that probably would have driven up the price a pretty significant amount. Still something I personally would have liked to see because when I'm using say like the 24 Ultra, I love having that additional flexibility and on the 23 Ultra as well. Not having it on the Fold 5 is not a deal breaker, but if you're wondering about the cameras, I can say that as a point and shoot, 50 megapixel portraits, those look really great, really good detail. But if you want the zoom, you're still gonna be wishing that you had it. Now again, right, I've had my SIM card in the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the 24 Ultra and the Pixel 8 Pro for significant amounts of time so I could give you guys a genuine uh, breakdown in my feedback on what I think of those devices on a day-to-day -day basis. But there are times when even when I had the SIM card in those other phones when I was at home, I was pulling this out to do a lot of that multitasking to respond to you guys in the comments section. Because honestly, to me, going to a fold kind of ruins slab phones for me. But that is personally a me thing. That's not going to be the case for everybody. But let me know in the comment section if you guys are, are looking at picking up a Fold 5 if you're holding off for the Fold 6, which will be coming out at the end of this year. Uh, supposedly with a wider display, which I'm definitely looking forward to. But aside of that, thank you guys so much again for stopping by and hanging out. I wish you a fantastic remainder of your day, afternoon, or night, depending on the time it is you are watching this and as always peace love and adios bye guys and have a great day